when one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I've just bought a field. I must go and see it, please. Excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out, please excuse me. Still, another one said, I've just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you've ordered has been done, but there's still room. Then the master told his servants, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Right from the start of the project, I was keen to do a painting of the Great Banquet and I couldn't figure out how to do that and not have it look just like the Last Supper painting. And eventually Alistair said to me, why don't you just do a painting of what we do every Sunday lunchtime at church? And uh, on a Sunday lunchtime, the church service starts with lunch and everyone uh, comes in and eats around the tables and it's, it's a beautiful way that the church builds community. Cafe Church is an opportunity for us to set our worship, the preaching of God's word, our fellowship and life together as a Christian community in the context of a shared meal. When we started Cafe Church a number of years ago, none of us knew each other's last names. We had no history or relationship with one another. And it seemed that the best way to establish those things was to do it in the context of food, of shared meal, of eating together every week. People accused Jesus of being a glutton and a drunkard. Much of the teaching, much of the informal uh, life and sharing with his disciples and others who gathered around and took place in the context of food. And so when we gather together, yes, there's an echo of that great banquet when we will celebrate that glorious feast, uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb, when all of his people will be gathered together. And we want to keep that in our minds as we gather together week by week to eat, to spend time, to get to know one another. And then in that context where we've uh, encountered one another, to worship together, to sit under God's word together, to reflect on what it means and what we're going to do with it, uh, and to go from here having been part of a family, a community, not just on a one-off special occasion, church lunches and special occasions are really important, but to do it week by week because that's the rhythm of how we are together. We believe that as adopted sons and daughters, God has made us a family. And families do best when they share family meals together, when they gather around the table, when they eat and enjoy each other's company, good food, a laugh, and just get to know one another. When we take communion together in our cafe church service, we do so around the tables that we've already shared lunch at. We don't have uh, formal pews or white cloths. We don't have solemnity and sometimes a little bit of uh, fear that can go with the uh, very formal communion service, but we do it around the tables where we've shared food. Because when Jesus gave new meaning to the bread and wine that were on the table at the Last Supper, he did so in the context of a meal. 
And so when we share bread and wine, we do so in the context of the meal that we've shared together already. We're already at table. We're already with our brothers and sisters around the table. And so for us, taking communion becomes a very real extension of what it is to enjoy a family meal together. We uh, had been having evening services for quite a while, um, maybe approaching a year, and we were, it had taken us a little while just to think what we were going to do for morning services. Um, there was nothing at that point, and there, there came a point where there were about 12 of us who wanted to see something happen in the morning, and we got together, had a, had a few meetings about it, and then thought, let's just start. And because there were so few of us, we thought, let's start by eating together, because in the Bible, in the New Testament particularly, there's a lot of eating together, the disciples do a lot of eating together, and we thought, this is, this is a good biblical principle. So we started, we made soup, we shared soup, we started a little bit later because we just thought um, most churches start at 11 or 10.30, so let's just, there's no reason why we should, uh, let's do it as a lunch. So we uh, started to grow from that point and um, yeah, lots of people started to come. The, the lunch has been a really important part of it. And in fact, it's, it's actually, it is a significant part of our worship is eating together. It's, it's not a random thing that we do just because it's nice to, um, to feel we, we can share food together, but it's a significant part of worship. Um, so we start with some worship, we start singing, and then we stop and we eat together, and then we continue with worship and continue through the service like that. Uh, now obviously we're a lot bigger, there's a lot more than 12 of us, so it's a bit more of an operation just to you pull the food together and to clear up afterwards. But it's, um, it's a really exciting part, it's an exciting development of St George's Tron in the last sort of five or six years. And yeah, every week I come in and I get ready for it and I just get so excited about what's, what's lying ahead. I kind of stumbled across St George's Tron. So I came over not having any idea where any churches were. And uh, I was just on Michalda Street. I think I was trying to find a church search group with my university. Uh, and straight away when I came in, I was greeted by Ruth. And one of the things I just loved about church was the fact that I was welcomed immediately. Someone came over, said hi, asked who I was, how I was doing, and immediately introduced me to other people. So here I immediately felt like I was at home and made it feel like I was welcome and part of the church family here. Yeah, definitely the community is the best part of church here. And I love it. I've been coming to Cafe Church for about two years, maybe two and a half years. Yeah, so in my church back home, we, we sometimes used to share lunch together. And that was a really worthwhile experience, I thought, because you get to just spend a bit more time with people that you see at church that often is just a, a, a short two minute conversation. And I think what we do at Cafe Church, uh, where we have lunch every Sunday, really allows you to, first of all, develop friendships and kind of maintain them. Because week by week, you're I, it's not a forced conversation, but you are forced to have a conversation, and I think it's a bit, it's much more relational. The most unique thing about Cathy Church for me is probably the setup. It's so social. Um, there's a few churches I know where it's as family orientated, where all of us come together, share a meal, and actually get to hear about your week rather than just what's been happening and then the service starts, and everyone sits in queues. And it's so unique to be sharing over food. It's something that is so integral to Cafe Church is you can sit down with a buffet that's somehow magically prepared week on week and yeah, getting to actually know the people we're sharing in worship with. So it's not just an individual responding, but actually it is the body of the church responding in worship. We're, we're brothers and sisters in that way, which is so unusual. You don't get that in a lot of churches in Glasgow. Hi, my name's Mark. I've been coming to the church in SGT for about three, half, four years. Um, the sanctuary is just amazing, the cafe church itself, just it's a place of rest, it's a place of hope, it's a place of love, it's family, it's Jesus sat with the disciples and spoke and broke bread, we break bread with each other, we get to hear everyone's daily lives, good times, bad times, it's brought me together, it's brought my life up, it's let me see things differently, it's just where, it's home, it's happiness and it's family, and that's the way I see it. Something I've always really appreciated about the church is 
the incredibly practical outlook they have to the gospel. So everything we do here is very hands-on with the cafe being in the building and how Jesus' ministry is lived out around a table because a lot of Jesus' work happened around a dinner table, eating food, sharing fellowship with people. And I love how practical and how tangible that is in this church and I've always really enjoyed that. It's also incredibly creative, which is great. Um, and that always blows me away every Sunday. Someone else walks in who's just incredibly gifted and is using that gift for um, like, the sake of the gospel, which is great. I just enjoy coming to Cafe Church. I think it's so different. It's so refreshingly normal space. And what I really most appreciate is the chance to be around tables together with people and share in our lives together, share their lives, share joys and sadnesses, to learn from each other, and also I really appreciate Alistair's teaching, which follows a time of lunch and then a time of worship, and then the teaching, and it all just seems to flow into each other and be completely doable and enjoyable and encouraging. I think what really struck me about Cafe Church was the fact that, that so many different people come here and from all different walks of life. Uh, there's students, there's professionals, uh, there's people who are retired and just so many different people and, and each week you get to sit with someone new and you get to, uh, especially with the table talk, you get to hear something so different about someone's life that you'd probably never ask them. So things that you'd never hear otherwise, it's just, it's just amazing. And I think it's a great way to just get to know your neighbor and break bread with your neighbor. And just, uh, it's, it's wonderful. I, for me, when I walked in here first, I felt welcome from the get-go. And so for me, it's, I, I really like this format. I really like Cafe Church. And uh, if I could replicate this all over the world, I absolutely will. And so for us, Cafe Church is a place where we can be the family of God's people and where we can enjoy each other's company as a preparation for focusing our hearts, our minds, our lives on God's calling to us as his disciples. What does it mean to follow Jesus? What does it mean to live as those who are invited to a great banquet, but for the time being, uh, we continue our discipleship, our pilgrimage as his people on the way.